Good weekend and welcome to Leading Edge, our first of its kind school in the state of Ohio is coming to Toledo. So you know we're digging to find out what it's really all about. Why we should embrace this one when other charters have so disappointed so many. But up first, one week after Perrysburg's mayor answered our questions about controversies swirling in that upscale northern Wood County city, we traveled across the Maumee Perrysburg Bridge to the Lucas County side of the river where what's happening makes its rival Peaberg's goings on look like child's play. The city of Maumee's top administrator suspended for what some see as his wrongdoing in an ethics probe he apparently triggered, looking at ethical lapses on and other wrongdoings on the part of some top elected officials, namely the mayor. Now, that is probably not the most flowery introduction Mayor Rich Carr has ever been afforded, but I do welcome the mayor back to my leading edge table. Thank uh, you. Mayor Carr is an attorney by trade. So let's start with what seemed to have prompted this drama, allegations of conflicts of interest in a land deal in which the city sold land to Monette's market. Lawyers certainly know what constitutes conflicts of interest. Did you have one? And if not, why would one be suggested? I did not have a conflict, and the attorneys found I did not have a conflict. I had previously represented on a uh, pro bono, free basis, mm -hmm. the church next door to them. And I had no longer been representing that church. I had severed the relationship with them about a year ago, and um, they weren't even interested in acquiring that property. In fact, they came to the council meeting and said they didn't take a position one way or another. Mm -hmm. the, the real issue involving this had to do with a motion as to whether or not the city had been illegally paying money to maintain a parking, a parking lot. lot. And that went back 10 years. I was not the mayor 10 years ago. Our finance director was not 10 years ago. That's what the motion was. And as an attorney who represents real estate companies and brokers, they did have a valid, it was called a tenancy at sufferance. Right. It was a valid lease. I pointed that out to our law director. She advised our city administrator that I was correct, and yet he still filed charges on it. It was also suggested Councilman Brent Bure was conflicted as his architectural firm had interest in parking in that area as well, right? So the city administrator, John Gizak, asked for an independent review by a Cleveland law firm with an expected price tag of 50 grand. I want to know this. Did at the time, did he come to you and say, Rich, Mayor, you know what? You should back off this whole thing. Even the appearance of conflict. Did you have that discussion? Never. Jerry, we did not even know uh, who was being investigated or what the allegations were until after the results came in. Council didn't have to approve this investigation? Council approved it. Okay. Okay. The investigation actually started in June. It was filed by our city administrator. It was not signed, but it was filed as though it was represented, and it stated in there that it was on behalf of Maumee City Council. Maumee City Council had never even discussed the matter. Documents then were being sent to his personal residence, and then in August, they come to City Council and they ask for $50,000 to do a study. And our administrator tells Council, the attorneys had said, you're advised not to do that. And they said, well, we don't even know what we're voting on. And they said, once you engage their services, they will come in and tell you. So by a four to three vote, they hired them, not knowing what this was even about. The attorneys have stated in writing they never gave that advice not to go into executive session or not to discuss it. And in fact, they have stated in writing that they were told this investigation would more likely cost $100,000. The legislation that council had that night. Had a $50,000 price tag. Right. The legislation the council was presented that night you... was not prepared by the attorneys. It, they had prepared legislation. Our administrator changed that legislation without telling the attorneys or the city that he had done Okay, that. I want to know what you... Okay, your suggestion that Mr. Gizak may have intentionally misled council about the probe and its terms. And its cost, yes. Why do you, why do you think he was coming after you? Jerry, when I first started as mayor, we had came off a four-year period where the city's operation fund, which provides the services and pays our mm -hmm. employees, had lost $7.6 million. Right. I came in and made cuts, 
and I made a lot of cuts in the spending. We didn't increase our taxes. The last four years, that same accounts operated a surplus without any additional taxes. With no tax increase. In fact, we lost our Anderson's corporate headquarters and the general store. In the last two years, it's operated a $700,000 surplus. I made cuts, and a lot of them were benefits that were our top executives were getting. And I eliminated some of those perks that they had. Uh, if they worked more than 40 hours, they got comp time. And they would use their comp time and then get checks at the end of the year. And when you're losing $3 million a year, you do not get extra checks at the end of the year. What's this about using a home address for city-related business? Was that an issue? We never knew about it until after it was completely over. Who was doing we it? got the bill. Our city administrator was. So the stuff pertaining to this was being sent to his personal Correct. address? Correct. It was on the bill. There was uh, Federal Express charges with deliveries to his home. So the probe by Squire Patton Boggs, this is a law firm out of Cleveland, Ohio, uh, the 50 grand uh, balloon to 90... Just over $90,000. $90, didn't suggest any criminal wrongdoing. But it didn't exactly exonerate you either. I think it did. It suggested the city better tighten up its, its re well, review its policies regarding conflicts of interest. Okay. But let's say, Jerry, that, yep. that you file a complaint against WTOL. Right. And you represent that the complaint is by WTOL and not by you. Uh -huh. The attorneys believe that it's on behalf of WTOL, so they appoint you to be the representative to respond to the complaint. So our city administrator who filed the complaint was named the representative to respond to his complaint and controlled all the documents that went in. We didn't even know what the allegations were when they interviewed us. Had we known, we could have provided documents that showed for both myself and Mr. Buer this wasn't accurate. The documents they were provided were very misleading. Then come calls for an investigation into Mr. Gzak's actions. That's the administrator kind of an investigation of the investigation. But that's not happening. Why not? What, we, what really happened, Jerry, is that I had made a recommendation to terminate the employment of our city administrator based on the facts that the attorneys had told us afterwards as to them not being told not to go into executive yeah. session, etc. Our city law director advised me to contact the city's attorneys here in Toledo, which I did. And when I spoke to them, I did not want it to appear because I was named in the original complaint that it was retaliation. I called our president of council. This was a consultation that was supposed to be to make sure if we're going to terminate him, we're doing everything right and we do not end up in a lawsuit. The funding wasn't for an investigation. It was to make sure we we're doing things properly to terminate him. They withdrew those funds. You have since, okay, let's take a break. Because this is this is deep stuff, and it's beautiful, historic Maumee, for Pete's sake. Uh, this is the mayor of the city of Maumee. This is Rich Carr. Uh, this is Leading Edge. We'll be right back.